Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, Principal Atmospheric Scientist at Nutrient Ag Solutions, and I want to thank you for giving me an opportunity to give you an update here about the way that summer shaped up and what we're expecting for this fall, given the developing La Nina and maybe what our winter uh, preliminary outlooks looks like. We're also going to take a close look at what's going on in South America as we wrap up this video. So I got a lot to cover. Let's get on into it. First map here, August 1st through October the 6th, average temperature ranks by climate district. Now we got 128 years worth of data across the United States. So the closer you are to the 128 number, that would be the coolest, the number one would be the hottest. The large ridges that continued to hit the western part of the United States sent the jet stream way to the north, which at times dug right through the mid part of the United States. The heat out west, of course, has given rise to the record number of uh, forest fires, both in size and in number. And you can see how hot it has been in the western U.S. But even though we had time periods of above average temperatures. Getting sustained heat into the central part of the United States and into the Midwest was difficult. So when we put it all together here, we're going to find that uh, much of the state of Illinois, when we look at the end of summer, beginning of fall, is having a top 20 coolest start to the uh, fall time period. Taking a look at the same data, but now in terms of precipitation, take a look at this. This is August 1st through October 6th precipitation ranks. And while multiple tropical systems have cut through the south, we've seen the development of a wedge right in through here, kind of stemming out of the southwest where drier conditions have emerged, well, several times throughout this summer. And it's that drought issue that I want to talk about. To do that, I'm going to show you an animation. What this is going to do is going to start back here on June the 30th and show you every day from June 30th to October the 6th, the four inch soil moisture percentile. So again, you can see the color bar down here on the bottom. Now, as I play this, you will see throughout the end of summer, widespread drought that developed right in through this area, of course, clipping Northern Illinois. There was at times patchy drought in central and Southern Illinois, but overall quite a bit of wet weather down here to finish our summer, which is what has really preserved the really good uh, crop that we have in the Southern part of the state of Illinois. Well, let me play it so that you can see it. You'll notice here as we got through the month of July, just a few pockets drier. But notice as we got into August, the wetter conditions in southern Illinois. Then you see at the end of August through the beginning of September, the really dry conditions in the northern part of the state. That was wiped out at one point for parts of northern and northwestern Illinois by a deep trough that cut through on the Labor Day weekend that went through here. But as we begin the month of October, you can see it as clear as I can. It's been a dry end of September and beginning of October. We have much of the state here showing lower than normal uh soil moisture. So this is a critical part of what our harvest effort is going to look like. And we're going to be talking about where we're going to be getting precipitation from here on out. Now, sometimes when we think about October, we have to keep in mind that tropical systems can come up the gut of the Mississippi and get us or out of Texas and get us. But this is a cool map put together by Brian Brett Schneider. And what it shows you is if you take all 12 months and rank them from wettest to driest, what does that look like for your particular area? Well, for the state of Illinois, we find that this would be the seventh or eighth driest month. So normally we're drying down. But as we said, something that could upset this would be tropical systems. Now, right now, 2020 is on breakneck pace for setting records for tropical systems. Uh, we've already exhausted our name list. We are now four names deep into the Greek alphabet. And that's because we have Hurricane Delta right now coming out of the Caribbean. But when you think about how these tropical systems have impacted the state of Illinois, I would like to show you this map made by Ian Livingston. And what it shows you is each of the nine systems so far, with Delta likely being the 10th, but each of the nine systems so far that have uh, hit the U.S. coast. Now, the two of importance for us, Cristobal was the first. And Cristobal came cutting right in through way back in June, bringing some rain over to the western side of the state and also in the northwestern part of the state. And then Laura clipped the southern part of Illinois, bringing in some heavy rain, but it was pretty far to the south. Well, the question is, is the next system going to be influencing us? Because it's a powerhouse of a hurricane. So just this morning on October the 6th, when I woke up, it was barely a Category 1 strength hurricane. Midday was already up to Category 4 in strength. And where it's going? Well, it's coming out of the Caribbean toward the Yucatan Peninsula, which is here. Cuba is over here. And the likelihood of Delta cutting right here onto this part of the Yucatan Peninsula is quite high, and it could possibly clip Cancun as a powerful, a major hurricane. Well, where's it going after that? And is it going to influence Illinois? There are some chances that it could. This is from the European model, bringing this hurricane right here into Louisiana, but the remnants of it could possibly go anywhere inside of the wedge that I just drew. 
You can see from the National Hurricane Center forecasting this to maintain major hurricane status and then coming up here toward the Tennessee and Ohio Valley. Question is, will we be getting any rainfall right in through this area on the northwest side? To get an answer to that, I would like to show you the high resolution forecast from the European model. This is playing through the end of the week. And if I just pause it right here, okay, let's go back, sorry. If I just let this play again, we kind of pause it right as we get there. You're going to notice that through Friday of this week, we got dry conditions in place. But you're going to see what's left of this tropical system. There it is, possibly pushing here over into this section of Illinois. Now, you're looking at this going, wait a minute, I see quite a bit of heavy rainfall in there. Remember, this is pretty far out in the forecast. We're going to have to wait to see if this materializes. But there's a second part to this I want to talk about. You see, as we watch the leftovers of Delta cut through the Ohio River Valley, a big system comes into the Pacific Northwest and develops a large low here in the North Central Plains and into the Canadian prairies. And its cold front could come through and clip the state of Illinois, giving us a brief chance at our frontal squall line. So as we work our way through the weekend and into early next week, this would almost get us to the middle of October, we do have a couple of chances of precipitation. Maybe a better way to look at this would be just to show you the percent, or excuse me, the um, seven day anomaly. So this is the difference from normal, not the percent of normal. Overall, we'd expect to see a drier wedge in through here, but we're gonna have to watch out for what could be the leftovers of Delta, and also this big low that comes cranking up here. Can it bring a frontal squall line through us early, early next week. So we got some things to be watching, but otherwise, much of this week we're currently in is going to be a great week to get some harvest progress done. After that, notice what the jet stream does. It builds another ridge west, broader trough here over the center part of the United States, cutting through this part of the Great Lakes. And we're going to take a look at a few minutes at what that's going to do in terms of our temperatures. But first, looking out only at week two. So this gets us from the 13th through the 20th. We do have a couple of chances of getting some rainfall as that ridge dives into this trough that cuts in through the eastern part of the United States. So notice that as we get in toward the middle of the month, we do have a chance at seeing near normal rainfall, maybe even at times slightly wetter than normal. But remember, October is a dry month. So this isn't calling for major kind of harvest shutdown type rains, but we could get some showers and some storms that move through. Now let's talk temperatures because the month of October is a season of change for us. It's a month of change. From October the 1st, to October the 31st, we generally expect much of the state of Illinois to drop anywhere between 15 and 18 degrees Fahrenheit. So we see some pretty rapid cooling, which means we're going to have to see quite a bit of cold fronts to get that to accomplish, to be accomplished. What am I talking about here? Well, through the first, uh, you know, part of October, we're going to see that big ridge that's over here in the west expand, pulling some heat back over toward the state of Illinois. So we're going to see that through this upcoming weekend, uh, October 11th. We're going to see some, a warm up happening after a cool start. Now we've already had patchy frost across much of the state, so that's early compared to normal. October 15th is a general first date for frost across the state of Illinois. We then see that as we work from the 11th through the 16th, we're going to continue with that warmer time period. But notice the trough that's starting to dig in here, bringing that cooler weather as the ridge still builds over us. The pattern change happens into that week two time period where the ridge reestablishes to the west and we get some cooler shots of air and better chances of rainfall. Remember, that's in the week two time period. So we're going to be on this kind of yo-yo path in terms of our temperatures for quite some time. But if we blend it all together and look at the European model's outlook for the month of October into early November, we're going to see the wettest conditions where the tropical system is going through and the deep troughs cutting in the northwest. We see that overall, kind of in a path right in between the two, we could see, you know, near normal to drier than normal conditions. This doesn't mean it won't rain. What this means is that the odds of it being wetter than average for the month of October are low at this point. If we do get drier conditions and we also see at times warmer conditions and maybe even finish the month on a bit of a warmer bias, Overall, that would be great for our fall field work, our fall applications, and of course, our harvest efforts. But I want to make sure I'm going to put an X through this so that we don't remember this particular map looking this way. The chances of the entire month just featuring above average temperatures, of course, is very low. That's because we frequently have cold fronts that snap through here. So remember, October's a transitional month. We're going to see some cooler weather at times. But I think when we average it all together, the whole month on the whole could come out with um, a bit of a slight warm bias, maybe a degree or two.
Okay, as we finish up this forecast video, here's some of the bigger picture things I'm going to be concerned about moving forward. This La Nina is the real deal. It's the strongest La Nina I've seen since the 2010-2011 time period. And uh, even though it doesn't extend deep into the North Pacific like some big La Ninas do, I can tell you that right now those ocean temperatures are down here a degree Celsius below average. That puts this at moderate strength. And this inset figure over here where you see the black lines I just drew, see how the blue's in there? That indicates strong trade winds, and that is a telltale sign of a developing La Nina. All right, October, November, December, the latest model runs say keep it around in the same position and even allow it to strengthen at times. That means this La Nina is going to be a dominant factor for North American and South American winter as we uh, weather, excuse me, as we move toward winter in North America and summer in South America. So let's see the impacts. What I'd like to show you here, this map does not show temperature. What it shows is the flow of the jet stream. So reds are ridges, troughs are in blue. Well, this is what we expect for October, more ridging west and a deeper trough over the east. As we go from there into the month of November, though, let's pause it. We see that through November, we're going to have to watch for the troughs that have been over Alaska to set up more permanent shop over the northwest. Now, if this is the case and our flow does come out of the southwest, we could expect November, while it's going to be a cooler month, to possibly have a slight warm bias compared to average. All right. From there, if we go from November into December, I see much of the same thing. I see at this point a lot of clipper systems running across the northern border of the United States and not much evidence yet in the models of these deep digging troughs that cut through the midsection of the United States being more frequent, which may mean that like the last decade, we could get a late onset winter. So when does it get here? Well, look at this. This is January. Now, by January, the atmosphere is advertising deep troughing here over the northwest. That's going to give us a strong subtropical jet stream in through here, which means wet. It's going to be a wet winter, at least according to the latest forecast. And going from January into February, this could be the month where things really rock and roll. If we get a ridge from Texas to Tennessee, and a trough cutting in through here, we're going to have two separate paths. I mean, we're going to have systems coming in like this and then running around on the subtropical jet stream like this. And we're going to be right in the path of these systems, a very uh, characteristic sign of an active winter. So seeing that through February, I would like to show you what the precipitation forecast looks like. Wet in the northwest, as you'd expect. And notice that through the Ohio Valley, it looks as though it's going to be a wet season with two separate storm tracks. One coming through, clipping the northern border of the United States. The second riding in the subtropical jet stream coming in just like this. We've got a lot to be watching with this developing La Nina this winter. Here's my last bit for you, okay? South America. The start of their growing season has been very dry. Much of Brazil's growing regions here, especially in the northern part of the country, have seen between 5 and 20% of normal precipitation. What's the forecast look like? It's going to continue to be very hot through the 10th, 11th, and 12th of this month and dry. We see some indications that the monsoonal moisture is trying to return here, but overall a drier bias is going to be critical to the early planting progress. As we move forward and look longer term, this is the precipitation deficits or anomalies that we're looking at going all the way out to the beginning of November. We need to watch to see if it stays dry north and dry south and how far inland these rains make it because it will be critical to the planting progress of soybeans. Now we know right now that Brazil is on pace to have a soybean crop that's 132 million metric ton. That's a trend line production number for Brazil. But with this developing La Nina, I have my concerns and my concerns are primarily going to be in southern Brazil and in Argentina for development. You see, the long-range outlook for December, January, and February could favor drier conditions in southern Brazil and Argentina, possibly some drier conditions in eastern Brazil as well. But Mato Grosso is a state we're going to watch most carefully, coming right down here through Mato Grosso do Sul, Paraná, and Rio Grande do Sul. So we got a lot to watch, and hopefully this video uh, was keeping you informed about the major things that I'm keeping an eye on. Hope you all have a great harvest time period, and we'll talk to you again very soon. Thank you.